tough news for New Bedford yesterday as we find out the New Bedford casino deal is dead. It's a done deal. Not going to happen. Mayor John Mitchell's on the line with us this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mayor. Yeah, good morning, Michael. Good morning, Warren. Thanks for having me on. Sure. So your reaction? So my reaction is disappointment. You know, you and I ran into one another in the studio yesterday, and you asked about the casino, and I told you that, well, you know, I've had somewhat of a sinking feeling because there was radio silence from KG Urban and uh, in the last several days. And uh, when I got about an hour after I got back to the office, they sent this letter along saying that they're uh, pulling out because they can't pull their financing together. They couldn't raise the money to fund the project, which stands in sharp contrast to what they had been telling us and telling the gaming committee and telling the public for some time. You know, as recently as early May, managing director of KG Urban, Barry Gosson, had told the Gaming Commission that they would be able to raise uh, all the money. And so we proceeded with a referendum on that basis. It put the city through an awful lot. They put the city through an awful lot by uh, by making that representation, and now the, the rug's getting pulled out from underneath us. So, look, nobody, nobody uh, has been proceeding under the assumption that uh, a casino is an end-all, be-all. It's it's not. But it, this particular project, in my view, was a very good opportunity for the city to create a lot of jobs. Obviously, to clean up a very dirty site. Yes. And also uh, to uh, through the funds that they would pay the city to accelerate a lot of our economic development efforts. I mean, things are going well, but this this thing would have really allowed us to accelerate. And you know, we'll uh, you know, we've got to move on from it. I, you know, one of the things that you know I've heard from a couple of folks from city council or some city councilors in particular who you know who reflexively criticized me for a lot of stuff and said, well, if you only had acted sooner. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So can you address yeah, that? I mean, to, you know, to my mind, it's easy to point fingers, but and they usually, you know, when it comes to the city council, they usually point in my direction. But you know, the reality is that this was a project that was didn't that didn't even have an operator until very recently. They they uh, I was skeptical uh, that they could attract an operator, and when they finally did, that's when we started to talk to them. And what I mean by an operator. Remind, remember that KG Urban is a real estate development firm. Unlike most of the other folks that came into other cities in Massachusetts looking to build casinos, um, they weren't a casino operator. So it's not like, but wasn't was there going to be a Foxwoods twist to this? Was Foxwoods going to be part of this? Yeah, the Foxwoods didn't come into the picture until uh, until January, and when oh, okay. came in and, and KG produced uh, the study that we had demanded, that's when we started talking to them. And we talked to them in earnest, and then they said that they could finance the deal, and so we uh, we did we did the deal, and it was a very good one for the city. My administration uh, fought very hard for a deal that would have worked very well for the city, protected the city's interests. Is it possible that it was too good for the city, and that might be what spooked them? I mean, was uh, it was it so? That's a good question. I've heard a caller on BSM uh, raise that as well. The reality is no. I know we we put restrictions on things like the hotel rooms and the amount of retail, the amount of stores and restaurants, but that wasn't going to cause a problem for them to get financed. The reason is this: that the profits from any casino are prim primarily come out of the slot machines and then secondarily from uh, the table games. And that there were no restrictions in the host community agreement that we signed on, on those things. So they could still generate uh, their profits and use, you know, things like the Zyterian Entertainment and the nearby downtown restaurants to serve uh, their patrons. So, so that you know that, that all would have worked very well. But you know, we're learning that they uh, they're not going to they weren't in a position to finance this thing. Which look, I, I get it. I mean, I get the, the risk with the Indians and the cleanup and all that stuff. But they had told us they had told us. That they would, that they could finance the thing. That's you know that, that's where the letdown is. They told us they could do this, and and then uh, after being here for a long time, and then all of a sudden pull out. Now, why why now? Why didn't they realize they didn't have the financing before, even like a month ago, or before now? Yeah, like, they, why now? There's, there's no way that they suddenly just figured out. Right, oh, geez. exactly. What, what yeah, would be their motive there? It's a fair it's a fair question. It's the same question. You know, that I uh, had asked, it's a, and it's a question that the Gaming Commission had asked. And as, you know, because look, it's an expensive project in a market that is not as strong as, say, the Boston market. And then you have the risk of uh, an Indian casino being opened in time. So, with, the, and with that, the prospect of the market being too saturated, too much competition in the market. And, you know, at some, at some level, as this is what uh, the chairman of 
the gaming commission said, "Well, just have to take to its face value uh, that you can you can do this because the, fin- the financing a private real estate development like this is in the hands of the, the private developers who own the site, who control the site, and right. the private and, uh, and uh, investors they bring in to uh, lend them money and to uh, uh, add to the uh, uh, bring in." Uh, for uh, for equity, so I mean, this this stuff all comes down to dollars and cents. You have to think if they thought they could make money on that site with these other existing casinos in the state, they would make the investment. They clearly just don't think that that can happen. That's got to be it. Do you think yeah. that they took I so mean, long that, because that, they were trying to get the money that, together, Michael? But it's but they had uh, they had said otherwise up until very recently, and that's that's where I think the, the you know the problem lies with this. So. Look, you know, we can, you know, as, as disappointed and as, frankly, as angry as I am, you know, both particularly for the residents of our city, but also, frankly, for you know, folks on our team who worked very hard for a very long period. Yeah, it must feel like just you wasted so much time right, on yeah. this for no reason. Yeah, yeah no, there's, there's, there's that. I can't deny that. There's a sort of a personal feeling that, geez, you know, we really poured ourselves into this, and, and now it's uh, all of a sudden done. But uh, look, at, uh, let me just say a couple things. There, uh, So... The idea of a, the, the possibility of a casino in New Bedford isn't entirely foreclosed because there is a scenario in which the Gaming Commission says, you know, we're, we're not going to issue a license in uh, this region of the state. We're going to hit the pause button. Now, there's, really? The, the, there's, yeah, there's the Brock because the, because the only the only project right now is the Brockton. That's less than ideal. Yeah, which is, you know, Brockton is basically in the Boston area and it's close to the Plainville casino already and and the other thing is the the referendum in brockton barely passed so if you're some, if you're a uh, member of the mass gaming commission you're going to think well is that really where the license should go so they might and they they had toyed with the idea of holding off on issuing a license in this part of the state so what i'd say to folks is what my door is still open to casino possibility uh, in the better i think you know, if there's there's an opportunity we'll we'll, we'll take a hard run at it as, as we always do and there's also another point there uh, in a similar vein, and that is, you know, with all the stuff that we do, it's, you know, I think baseball is a pretty good analogy. Sometimes you, know, sometimes you try to hit singles and doubles. Sometimes you hit home runs. We try to, we do try to hit, we tr- do try to do both. And so the singles and doubles are working. There's lots of growth in the economy. The, the, the downtown looks better than it's ever, ever had in our lifetimes. Uh, the port is growing. There's lots of good stuff going on. And, and it's all happening sort of you know, in little bits here and there, and it, it adds up. There's lots of job growth, there's no doubt about it, and lots of you know, movement in the real estate market. There's, there's a feeling of optimism in the city. Every once in a while, though, you know, you, there's an opportunity to hit a home run, and sometimes when you swing to the fences, you know, you know that, that you, might sure. not, uh, you might not connect. But it's not, there isn't, that's not the reason not to try. And so, 100% agree. That's a total Michael Rock saying, by the way. You don't have to go for a home run. Just go for a single. Uh, right, but, but you, you get what I mean. You, yeah, yeah, totally. You, absolutely. We're going to continue to do that. Uh, we're, so, so I'll have more to say about this in the next couple of days. But, uh, it, you know, I, people shouldn't feel demoralized that this thing didn't happen. I'm very disappointed, but I'm not demoralized. Are, and so you're not ready to say that New Bedford's not going to get a casino? I think there's a ch- yeah I think there's a chance, but I guess my, my point's a little bit broader than that. And that is, look, I'm disappointed that this project didn't happen. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff going on in the city that we're going to continue to work hard on uh, all the time because it is that those things are working. And sometimes the big the big things don't work out. Yeah, but that's you know the risk. Uh, the, just because there's a possibility of failure doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And uh, that's that's my attitude. And. Uh, that's been my attitude since I became mayor. That look, when we have we have a, an opportunity to go after it aggressively, and some things you don't control. You don't control whether a big investor can, a big developer can finance a project, like yeah. a casino or something else. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> All right, hey, so so t- tomorrow, tomorrow, Samantha Johnson, she's definitely one of the reasons we can be proud in our city. Oh, for sure. You're going to be honoring her tomorrow uh, during the, that music series down on the waterfront? Yeah, so there's a good thing going on, right? So, so Samantha Johnson is fantastic. She's fabulous, and she is worthy of our celebration. And so the uh, Friday nights of the summertime, uh, we've been doing, as you know, the the uh, uh, the summer sound series that, that 
has has a great following. We've got at least 500 people every every concert. And it's been great. And so at intermission of tomorrow's concert, Samantha will come up and we'll give her a big rally to send her off. And nice. hopefully uh, America's Got Talent will uh, we'll use some of the video from that. So we want to have a good showing um, uh, tomorrow night uh, from from uh, all of uh, Great and New Bedford, get people out there and uh, to cheer on Samantha because she's, uh, you know, uh, they give her a boost. Every every little bit helps, you know, and uh, she's she do she will do great no matter what the judges say. But uh, we hope that we hope that she'll uh, she'll win, of course. But either way, she has our support and our uh, and our pride. And real quick, what time is that pep rally? So that'll be uh, that'll be right about seven. That's right. about the break point of the. Uh, event so maybe people should just get there a little bit before seven all right mayor mitchell talking about the uh, new bedford casino deal that is now dead thank you very much we appreciate Thanks you calling so in this morning